the number of COVID-19 patients in ICU could go up over the coming weeks in Singapore. The task force says this is because of a so-called time lag between people getting the virus and becoming severely ill. For more, Geraldine Yap joins us live. Uh, Geraldine, uh, what are the current ICU figures telling us? The number of ICU cases has remained low at around 5 to 7 over the last 18 days. And that's also the same period that we've seen the number of cases start to rise sharply. Just yesterday, there were 450 locally transmitted cases, and that's the highest number since last August. Now, if we look at the ICU cases, they are mainly frail seniors with pre-existing conditions and also unvaccinated. And the task force says that this is an encouraging trend so far. But they're also mindful that the situation could worsen, and if a rise the number of cases translates to more people in ICU, then they might have to take additional steps to control community spread. The numbers report now in the ICU, low as they are, reflect a situation that's consistent with the infections that occurred one to two weeks earlier. Because there's a lag phase between people getting infected and then deteriorating to the extent they require ICU care or even then subsequently dying. So our numbers now in the ICU may be uh, correlated with the number of cases we had two weeks earlier when the numbers reported were still relatively low. So we need to look over the next two weeks to see whether with each succeeding week, the numbers in ICU now start to rise. I mentioned before that we can stand up, up to a max of 1,000 ICUs, um, but really we don't want to go anywhere near that. Because to reach there, you seriously degrade hospital services. Yeah, right now, we can probably stand up to a, a, a couple hundred, 300 maybe, um, and able to cope with that level. So this is the kind of uh, cap that we are working on for the time being. Uh, Jardine, with the current exponential rise in case numbers, what's uh, the task force saying about tightening restrictions? Now, this rise in cases that we are seeing is something that the task force had already expected as the country reopens and, um, you know, we, people resume social and economic activities. And it's also a situation that we are seeing in other countries like the UK and several parts of Europe. But this increase, the task force says, had happened sooner than anticipated. But they say that there's no need to go back to a state of heightened alert or circuit breaker. And this is a point that they've been made, um, that has been made before. One of the reasons is because the current vaccination rate of over 80% puts Singapore in a better position since vaccinated people are less likely to develop severe illness or die. And the task force says they understand that there might be COVID-19 fatigue among some people, but others are concerned about their health and safety. And so they're urging people to adopt uh, a habit of pervasive testing and continue to comply with safe management measures like wearing of masks and keeping to group size limits. Um, so there's not going to be any tightening of restrictions for now, but there also won't be any further re reopening. The MTF uh, does not take the support of Singaporeans for granted. I think we are very appreciative that we have been able to come so far because of the trust between the people and the government and because of the support that people have for our various measures. Some of the measures can be very difficult and challenging, but they comply with them. So we fully understand uh, that sometimes the frustration that uh, uh, it's not, we are not able to open up uh, as fast as we would like to. Now, the authorities will still be keeping a close watch on the number of serious cases and deaths over the next few weeks. And the task force has reiterated that if the situation worsens, a heightened alert or circuit breaker is not out of the question. But these are last resort measures which the authorities will try to refrain from taking as far as possible. Geraldine Yap reporting that. Thank you.